kind of blow away at, as to what this was. You know, and then I heard about the Skinwalker Ranch thing where they were talking about the big wolf-like creature, and I'm going, holy cow. You know, I may just have a picture of what those guys seen over there that, that they didn't manage to get a picture of, you know. And I thought, well, you know, maybe it's just – but, you know, I can't tell you that it's not – maybe it's like a sculpture. Maybe it's a – it's a sculpture. Maybe it's some kind of a sculpture. And then I thought, man, you know, maybe this is like a zoo. Maybe these guys are going around different planets and gathering stuff up and putting it in a zoo or something. And maybe it's, this thing is a, a hostage for somewhere else. And I thought, well, you know, they give me a good hard look and they realized that I was, uh, I'd be too much of a pain ass to take care of it. They didn't want to mess with it. I don't know why they didn't want me, but they, they could have been that they looked at me and decided they, I'd be too much trouble to take care of and didn't want to mess with the hassle. So I'm thinking, well, what else is on this thing? So we've been looking at this, and uh, I'm, I'm brightening the image up so you can see it a little bit better. I'm not doing any, you know, and I've had people bet this video to pieces. I mean, I've even, the American Skeptic Society one time asked me if they could uh, – could do a debate on it, and I give them permission to, and send them all the original videos and <coughs> and images and stuff. And I guess they they looked at it and they come up and they tested it and they did everything they could think, and they said, "Well, yeah, it's kind of undecided, undecided either way, you know. They, they couldn't really disprove it, and that was the whole point of using it, I guess. But uh, so I, I've I've had a lot of people vet this footage and. And uh, they can tell you that it's not manipulated by any software or anything like that. I don't even own Photoshop, much less knowing how to use it. And But I'm sitting there thinking, you know, if this thing's on there, what else could be on there? So I'm looking at the dark reaches of this thing, and we add some brightness to it. And I keep trying different software to get this thing cleared up. And I, I finally found some that worked amazingly good. And I'm like, wow, you know, this is some of the best images I've seen. I said, well, let's brighten it up and look into some areas I haven't got to see yet. And when I did, we, I see there's there's this thing over I don't even know what to call it until I started. I started really working on it to get add some brightness to it and some contrast to it where you could see it better. And then once I did see it, what it is is just completely baffling. This thing is... 40 feet tall. It has to be. I recorded this video at a mile away. This thing has to be 40 feet tall, as tall as a tall telephone pole. Towering over the craft surface. It looks completely insect. And you can see it well enough that you can see, you can even see the insect mouth on it. You can see that this thing has long arms that stretch out of its back. They come out of its back like a spider. It's, it looks like it's kind of got a body like a praying mantis, but the arms come out of the back of it instead of out of the chest like a praying mantis arms do. And these arms are incredibly long. This thing has such an amazing reach like nothing I've seen here. I, I, I showed this image to a zoologist, and I said, have you ever – seen anything like this and he goes he goes I, I've seen everything he goes but I've never seen that he goes where exactly did you get that and I, I told him I said I said I found this on top of a UFO surface it's, it's a V-shaped craft it's, it's a mile in length each half of the V would be a half mile long and then the guy just kind of went quiet you know and he goes well, it's he goes I've never seen that I said, I cannot identify their particular animal. I said, it's not, nothing I've see, ever seen. He said, and I've seen just about every insect on the planet. And he said, I, I've never seen anything like that. So uh, the zoologist was blown away. But he wasn't willing to put his name out there. And I don't blame him uh, to be ridiculed along with me for seeing the daggum thing or believing the thing. So he didn't want his name associated with it, but he did state off the record that it was completely freaked out by whatever this thing was. And those images there on Google as well that you can see it. Uh, I think it's uh, insectoid. It's, it's, the, it's the best. It's the biggest capture of a alien insectoid that anybody's ever produced that I've seen. I, I haven't seen a any picture out there that's any better than this thing and it is scary big you know they want to tell you that all aliens are small and gray and have these big cute eyes and they're very fragile and we could break them if we want well this thing right here both of these things actually are so big 
like that dog-like creature, uh, the size of it compared with the distance that I took that picture, this thing would have to be 40 feet long, 20 feet tall. And if it was running through your neighborhood, you, yeah, <laughs> it would be very bad for everybody involved. This thing is a giant creature. It would be a giant creature down here on the ground. It would be huge. I can't guarantee it's a creature. Could this be a statue? Oh, both of them could be statues. Or I've even thought that maybe there could be some kind of a like a, me- a skin on a mechanism, like like we might put a skin on a dozer to make it you know, like a triceratops, triceratops or something like that, you know. Uh, and if they fly these metallic things, and it might be something we have to do, like if we have metallic, if we fly into atmospheres that have a lot of acid and stuff like that, we may have to put a skin of some sort on our machinery. So, you know, so maybe these are biomechanisms that are actually machines that have a skin like an animal. Maybe they an animal they came across in their travels. Who knows? I, I can't begin to explain what the hell these things are or who came up with them or how the idea came to about them or if they're actual genuine, genuine creatures or maybe they are creatures that they've taken from other worlds and they're going to put in some kind of some kind of a zoo somewhere out, out there on some planet but but those pictures are absolutely amazing and then I thought well you know there, there can't be any more I'm not even you know, I don't see any more well there turned out to be I came across a third one on that same craft and you have to realize that this this V-shaped craft, I mean, at the way it moved, we couldn't build anything like that. It would break up. Moving at that kind of speed and stopping as quick as it did, it would just break into pieces and fall to the ground. And it's a shame this thing didn't fall to the ground. This thing would be so big that you would need a golf cart to drive around it. There wouldn't be no way the government could hide it. Because, like I said, each half of the V is a half mile long. This thing, you would need a golf cart or a pickup or a Jeep or something to drive around this thing. It would, it would be almost two miles in distance just to drive around this thing. And and this thing would be so big underground, there wouldn't be any hiding it. It would just crush anything it fell on. It's, it, it has this great mass and great size. You'd fly an airplane over it. You could see it from, you could probably see it from outer space, as big as it is. If it it had fell to the ground, it came within what looked like a thousand feet or less of the ground. So it came very close to the ground, and I could almost feel the pressure of the ground. I did not see any wind as a result of it, but it did feel like the atmospheric pressure around me changed. It it felt like uh, this thing had that fog coming off of it was like it came from outer space, and it was so cold that the change in the temperature created the fog, just the cold surface being next to the the warm air was what, what was causing the fog at when it first came in. And, and it almost did feel like the temperature, it, it felt like it almost warmed up when this thing went over me. And the, the sound of the truck engine changed, and you can hear that on the video that I took. And it, it could explain some of the, the change in the pressure of the area and stuff like that. So, And uh, this thing was, I caught that clip of video, and this thing was moving back at me. And so now I'm like, first, I'm afraid I'm not going to miss a shot. And I've caught the shot. Now this thing's coming at me. Now, now I'm looking back at my truck, and I'm thinking about crawling up underneath the, the drive wheels of the tractor to, to hide again. So that's how it, it's coming back at me now, and I'm starting to freak out again. I'm starting to get scared. So then it, it stops. It stops in its place. And then it slowly makes this half circle around my location. It it starts accelerating upward at a at a 45 degree angle, and it went from being a mile long craft flying over the surface of the ground in north central Texas to some dots moving across the sky, just like what I seen coming in earlier. And it didn't take about two and a half seconds for that to happen. So this thing, when it took off, I mean, man, it it took off big time. Something that big went from something very tiny moving across the sky in just a matter of seconds. And there's nothing out there that we got can do anything like that. It was just amazing. And I've got Mary here. Mary, would you like to say hello? <laughs> no. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> she says no, huh? She, she says no. Come I'm on, man. She didn't want to be <laughs> Well, 
you know, it's going to stay here. So what you know, but if you if you can keep you know keep it up, we'll keep the show going every Saturday for two hours. But you know, if you can find people who even come by and just share a story, it'll help you keep it going. You know. I invited Janet, but like I said, you're in the middle of something, and she came on and stayed a few minutes and then left because I know she's got lots to do over there. But, you know, oh, I'm yeah. sure you can figure out something. You're bound to know other people that have stories. Just invite them over like you said on oh, Saturday they do. night. I, I and, a lot of them. They're scared that, you know, being on the radio, being on the radio is like being on TV. Yeah. You know, they're scared. <laughs> you know, First like, oh, time no, it I is. They get used to I it. I can't tell it on the air. I can say it. I, you in person. I can't tell it on here. You know, people are just oh, scared to death. Oh, uh, they, well, they, you never you know, know what, you know, I, but we may not have heard the stories. The trick is that we want to hear things we haven't heard before, you know. But, right, yeah. I mean, we've heard all the Brew Rabbit, but, uh, you know, the thing is with the COVID virus, a lot of people are getting on and doing funny things just for entertainment, you know. Ha, have y'all right. been having to wear masks over there or no? Ah, uh, they, the masks have been kind of optional, but there's starting to be places now like the, some of the stores won't let you in unless you have a mask on. Uh, wow. I know they have to social distancing, and then they just opened Texas back up, so the restaurants are open again now, and of course the virus is taking off pretty good. <laughs> but it's it's not quite as bad. Well, we don't. I guess we'll see here in about a month. But, uh, did y'all ever know anybody that caught it? I never met anybody that did. I think one of my did wife's you? family that lives out, I think, in Florida actually got it. There's Down here. Some distant, of, some distant kin of hers has it, but that's the huh. only person. Oh, we only have five cases in our county. Five cases. Oh, you so. did have five cases. So you know who they are? Are they real? I mean... One thing about reporting for real is finding out the real truth, not just hearsay, right? Because hearsay is not submissible in court, but they expect us to believe the news. Just know because it was hearsay, you know? Well, yeah, we've got a lot of friends that work up at the hospital, and, uh, you know, they they are are some cases of it. They're just not a lot. uh, It's not as bad as they had made it it sound like it's going to be. So the nurses well, have all we been. Don't, yeah. Well, you know, even that kind of story, if you want to just do some reporting sometime, just cite your sources like a good journalist. I'm a member of uh, SPJ, Society of Professional Journalists. So, you know, if people don't want to tell a, a funny story or uh, something based on their own personal experiences, they may want to talk about. I like, you know, something people just want to talk about. But anyway, we have we have the time set aside just for you, Ronnie. So, and you ain't going to believe this, which I think is a good topic, and Janet liked it too. You just can't run out of material because the one thing radio doesn't like is dead air. <laughs> oh, I know. So, no. But I think it's a good idea, and, uh, you know, if you say, well, folks, we're going to do something different tonight or because for me, two hours is always way short, but I've been doing it eight years, you know. So right. how you feel? You you hanging in there? You doing okay? Yeah, I'm hanging in there. We, can, oh, we only got like uh, 17 minutes left in the show, so I don't think 17 yeah. minutes is going to be a problem. Good. Okay, well, I'm going to turn it over to you. And, and then, uh, you know, at the end, uh, you got you got the time right, so... Uh, Folks, we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, Ronnie Dawson of Texas, and you can find him on Facebook or right here and on YouTube and iHeart and Spotify and Spreaker and Stitcher and FM Radio and all kind of places. This, I pay extra money after this many years. I figured out where I want to be and what I want to be doing. So I don't have to go by the numbers on just one place because I spread it out all over the place. And uh, people like our UFO shows. We Thursdays, we do psychic readings, and Sunday's sort of a spiritual show. And um, Thursdays are the ones that Anna likes. Uh, Anna, we're doing Thursdays for psychic readings with Suzanne. 
And then uh, this one. And then Tuesday night, I'm going to start having people help with getting their businesses back going again with different men on Tuesdays for entrepreneurs about business and what we're doing together to, you know, have a nice community and business and entrepreneurs. So if y'all have got an idea, let Ronnie or me know.